Hello, linear algebra students. I'm going to work three examples that are conceptual and involve the characteristic polynomial and diagonalization. Really, you can add seven one to this. Those were the three sections that involve diagonalization, finding eigenvalues, and finding eigenvectors. My first question, we have M, we're given its characteristic polynomial. So let's make an observation here, M is, three by three, that is the degree of my polynomial. And then we see the eigenvalues are, we have lambda equals zero, two, and six. Okay, now, first question, is M diagonalizable? Absolutely, the answer is yes. Now these are all why or why not questions, so I will give a reason for each answer. Well, we have a three by three matrix with three distinct eigenvalues. So this will be diagonalizable. You could find an eigenvector for lambda equals zero, find an eigenvector for lambda equals two, find an eigenvector for lambda equals six. Those three vectors will be linearly independent. Those three vectors will be an eigenbasis or M. Next question. Is M invertible? No. Well, the reason zero is an eigenvalue. That is one characterization of having a matrix that's not invertible. You could also answer this question with determinant. We know the determinant of M is the product of these three numbers, which is zero. Number three. Is m squared plus 5i invertible? Well, we can figure out the eigenvalues of m squared plus 5i. So let me make a note in black. Note, if we have mv equals lambda v, well, m squared plus 5i v, we have m squared v plus five V. Now, M squared V, let's think about this. We apply M, we get lambda V. We apply M again, we get lambda times lambda V. So this becomes lambda squared V plus five V. Altogether, we have lambda squared plus five V. What this says, and let me make this slightly smaller, if lambda is an eigenvalue for m, then lambda squared plus 5 is an eigenvalue for m squared plus 5i. Okay, therefore, the eigenvalues for m squared plus 5i are, well, we take 0 squared plus 5, we take 2 squared plus 5, and we take six squared plus five. So the answer to my question is yes, m squared plus five i is invertible. Well, the determinant would be these three numbers multiplied, which is very large. You could also just say zero is not an eigenvalue or m squared plus five i, m squared plus five i. Okay, very nice. Next question, this came off the spring 2023 final exam. A is six by six. Of course, we could have figured that out just looking at the characteristic polynomial. But then here's our characteristic polynomial. For each eigenvalue of A, what are the possible geometric multiplicities? Well, we have three eigenvalues for A. We see that the algebraic multiplicity of one is four. The algebraic multiplicity of two is one, and the algebraic multiplicity of three is one. We see that from the characteristic polynomial. Now, immediately, we know that the geometric multiplicity of three is one. We know the geometric multiplicity of two is one. But the geometric multiplicity of one, this can be 
Well, it can be one, two, three, or four. So these are my answers. Number two, must A be invertible? Yes. A is an invertible matrix because you could say zero is not an eigenvalue. That's true. We can also calculate using a determinant. So this would just be two times three times one times one times one times one. Okay, that's six which is not equal to zero. Number three, if the rank of A minus the identity is three, can A be diagonalizable? Oh, okay, okay. Notice that this is just A minus lambda I, where lambda is one. And this is the eigenvalue where we have algebraic multiplicity. So there are some possibilities for the geometric multiplicity, at least if we look at the characteristic polynomial. So now we're adding this more information. Okay, well, we know the dimension of E sub one. This is my geometric multiplicity. This would be the nullity of A minus I, which is six minus the rank of A minus I. Well, the rank is three, so six minus three is three, which is less than the algebraic multiplicity. No, the answer is no. We cannot have a diagonalizable matrix in this situation because we would need the nullity of A minus I to be four, or another way to say it, the geometric multiplicity of eigenvalue lambda equals one to be four. We would need this to have a diagonalizable matrix. And that is not what we see here. Last question, P is a matrix with this characteristic polynomial. So if P is N by N, what is N? Well, we're asking for the degree of this polynomial. You'll notice we have lambda squared plus two, lambda squared plus two, lambda squared plus two, that's six degrees, but then I have a minus one minus lambda to the seventh. So my answer is six plus seven, which is 13. The determinant of P. Well, if you look at this, you'll notice that it does not factor into linear terms. And in particular, I'm going to be using that to answer my question number four, but or three, oh, excuse me, I'm on number two. It is always the case that the determinant of A is we evaluate my polynomial at zero. Oh, determinant of P. Why is that? Well, what is the characteristic polynomial evaluated at zero would be the determinant of P minus zero I, right? And so if you're handed a characteristic polynomial, you know immediately what the determinant of the matrix is. You can just evaluate the polynomial at zero. So here we get two cubed times minus one to the seventh, which is minus eight. Is P an orthogonal matrix? Well, what do we know about P? The only real eigenvalue is lambda equals minus one. We also know, for example, P is invertible because the determinant's not zero, but it is not an orthogonal matrix. Orthogonal matrices have determinant either one or minus one. So this is a no. The reason is orthogonal matrices have determinant one or minus one. And that is not the case here. This is the last part. Can P be diagonalizable? This is also a no. Definitely not, not over real numbers, which is what we are working over in this course. So um, the real eigenvalues, we see them of P are lambda equals minus one, algebraic multiplicity of minus one is seven. And so we only have no more than seven linearly independent eigenvectors. So P has no more than seven.
linearly independent eigenvectors. And the thing is, we need 13 of them. Definitely, P cannot be diagonalizable. Okay, thank you so much, class. I hope these three conceptual questions were helpful.